right, welcome to the third and final part of the story of Joseph. You ready to hear how it's going to end? All right, let's open up God's true word, the Bible, to that very first book of Genesis. We are on Genesis chapter 42, and now we're going to get to find out what happened to those brothers. Those, I need a word here. What do we use to describe those brothers? What word would you use? Those sneaky jealous, conniving, lying brothers. Remember those guys? Yeah, we're going to get to find out what happens to them. Would you use the word honest for those brothers? Hmm. I don't think I would either. Let's see what they say about themselves. So we're in chapter 42. We are now in the years of the famine. Remember the Pharaoh's dreams, the king's dreams? He dreamed about the fat cows and the nice grains and then the skinny ones and the sad ones. Remember that? We are now in the sad years, years where food just wasn't growing in the land. But the land of Egypt was ready because Joseph had interpreted those dreams and they had stored up the food. And so the Egyptian people were doing great, but other lands, not so much. Remember, the brothers lived in the land of the Hebrews, and they were starting to run out of food. God's family was in trouble. Remember, God had a special promise for this special family. Is it to starve to death? Is that God's promise? No. God's going to do something. Let's find out what's going to happen. Now, Daddy Jacob had said to the boys, All right. It is time to get some food. I hear that in Egypt there's some food. So I want you all to all go, well, not all of you. Benjamin's a little bit too small for this journey, the youngest brother. Benjamin will stay at home, but the rest of you go to Egypt. Here, I'll give you some money, and I want you to buy some food for our families. And so he loaded them up with some money and sent them on their way. Well, when they got to Egypt, they had to face the man in charge of the food. Who is that? Joseph, that's right. Joseph looked a little different at this point. He was about 30 years old when he took charge, and now we're seven years plus, maybe one, into the famine. He's almost 40 years old at this point. Didn't look like that 17-year-old kid they threw in the pit and sold, right? So Joseph is now in charge. Probably looks real fancy and in his nice robes. And don't forget, he's got that ring on, right? He's in charge of all the land. So they don't recognize him when they come in and they bow before him. Bow before him. Does that sound familiar? Do you remember Joseph's dreams about the grains of wheat bowing and the stars in the sky bowing to him? It came to pass, didn't it? Yeah, that part's coming true, isn't it? Just like God said it would. Well, the brothers bowed before him Joseph knew exactly who they were. And he said, you spies, you spies from the land of Hebrews, you're coming to sneak in on Egypt and to see what's going on in Egypt, aren't you? They said, no, 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 not us. No, no, we just came to buy food. Look, look, we have money. We're here to buy some food. I don't believe it, said Joseph. Joseph took them all and threw them in jail. For three whole days, they sat in jail. A little bit of justice, right? Just a smidge of justice for the wrong they had done. After three days, Joseph came to them and said, this is what I want you to do. I want nine of you to go back and get the little one, the one you told me about, and bring him here. One of you will stay in jail until you do so. And so the brothers went back home to their land and they told their dad, Jacob, about what had happened. Well, along the way, they had to take a little break. And so they opened up their sacks to give their donkeys some food. And inside their sacks, they found their money bags full. In everyone's sack, their money was full. They told their dad, Jacob, what had happened. They said, we were there. We told him, you know, we're, we're all brothers. And then we have a dad. And we have a little brother who's back at home. And, and I don't know what happened, but... He sent us back, and all our money's returned. And, um, one of our brothers is not with us because he's in prison. But it, it's okay. He said, we can have him back. We just have to return with Benjamin. No way, Jacob said. No way. 
First I lose Joseph, then I've got a brother, a son in prison, and now you want to take Benjamin? No, no, we will survive in what we have here. And they did, for a little while. Remember how long that famine was going to be? Seven years. Well, they're only about two years into it now. And again, they ran out of food. They said, we need to go. We need to go buy some food. Jacob said, fine, go. Please take care of Benjamin. And one of the brothers said, I will, Dad. I promise if anything happens to Benjamin, it's on my life and the life of my own children. I promise we will take care of Benjamin. And so Jacob said, here's some more money. Take the money you have returned and take some more money to buy some more food. Tell them about the mistake that happened and give some gifts. Take some spices, take some honey, and take some almonds and some pistachios and give them and plead for mercy so you don't get what you deserve. And so they did. They went all the way back to Egypt and Joseph saw them coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven brothers. My brothers. And Jacob, uh, Joseph ordered that his house be opened and that the brothers come inside. Oh, they were scared about this. What's going to happen to us now? Why are we going into this man's house? Is he going to kill us? Is he going to throw us in jail? Oh, this is what we deserve. Sat them all down at the banquet table. Gave them food. Lots of food. And they lined up from oldest to youngest. And there he was, his little brother Benjamin. Joseph gave him five times the amount of food. He was so, so happy to have his brother. <laughs> so, so happy that he actually had to leave the room to cry. That's his family. Almost his whole family, right? He didn't get to see his dad yet. Yet. Well, Joseph wanted to bless them. So he said, here is food for your journey. Go and come back anytime. Well, Joseph had a plan. He did something. In Benjamin's sack, he took his cup. He had a special cup. And he put that inside Benjamin's bag. And the next day, when they set out on their journey, he sent one of the guards after them. Stop! Halt! Thief! Thief? There's no thief. There's a thief among you. Who is it? There's no thief. We haven't done anything wrong. I promise. I promise. And from the oldest to the youngest, the guards searched their bags until Benjamin's. This is a special cup. Does this belong to you? No, no, no. I don't know how it got in there. I promise. I promise. I don't want to hear it. And he grabbed all the boys and back to Egypt they went. Oh, when they were back in Egypt, they said, oh, we've done it now. This is it. This is it. I knew one day that we were going to have to pay for the sin of, of throwing our brother in the pit and selling him to the Egyptians and lying to dad about it, and this is it. We're all going to die. Well, Joseph heard all of this. He told all his Egyptians to leave the house. It was just him and his brothers. He decided it was time. He said, it's me. What? It's me. What? It's me, brothers. It's Joseph. It's really me. The one you sold to Egypt. God has put me in this place to take care of you. It's me. I can imagine how astonished they were to see their brother alive and well and in a position of power over them. They were probably afraid, too. Joseph said, don't be afraid. I want to take care of you. We're only two years into the seven-year famine. You can't live in that land anymore. It's not going to produce food. Come here. Go home. Bring dad. Bring your whole families. I promise to take care of you. Joseph gave them, not only didn't give them what they deserve, but gave them an abundance of goodness, gave them grace, gave them what they did not deserve. And so they did. They went home and they got their families, huge families. There was about 70 people in all. And Joseph, under the king's blessing, gave them the very, very best of the land. And there they lived together for a good long time. Joseph got to see his dad again. Jacob got to see his son. Joseph is not dead. Jacob blessed all of his sons and lived a good long life. And at the end of his life, 
Joseph said this to his brothers in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. He said to his brothers, don't be afraid. You brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Do you know this many people extends on and on and on? This great big special family is huge, so huge. Do you know who I think I'm most like in this story? The brothers. I mean, I would like to say I have good words about myself. The brothers, when, when they were caught being spies, they told Joseph, we're not spies, we're honest men. Really? Honest? Oof. I was Joseph. I don't know if I could keep quiet at that minute. My blood would begin to boil. You are not honest men. You tried to kill me and you had me sold. Mm -mm. Well, I'm not honest all the time either. I got to tell you that sometimes I've told things that weren't fully the truth. We call that a lie. Sometimes I have said things that are not kind. Mean, mean words. Mean words to my sister, to my friends, to my parents. Anything you say that breaks God's law is sin. And sometimes I don't do or say anything. Sometimes I just think it like, <clears throat> I hate her. But I don't say it. Sin is anything you think, say, or do that breaks God's law, God's word. And the Bible says that each and every one of us are sinners. If there's one word to describe me and you, it's sin, sinner. The Bible also says that the punishment for sin is death. God is just. Sin must be punished. But God is merciful too. From the very beginning, God said, I have a plan for you, for you, for this big, special family that we're a part of. He said, if you believe in me, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to send my son, my only son that I love so much. He's going to live a perfect life. He's never not one time going to think, say, or do anything that breaks my law. And then he's going to die. He's going to die to pay the penalty that you and I deserve. He's going to die for my sin, for your sin. Wow, that's mercy. We don't get what we deserve. We deserve to die, you and me, for our sin, but we don't get that because Jesus did it for us. And it gets better. You see, after three days, Jesus rose from the dead, and he is alive today in heaven, sitting on the throne, ruling and reigning over us. That if we believe in him, we get to have a relationship with him. We get to have a relationship with God that can start now and goes on forever and ever and ever and ever. That's grace. That is better than a banquet table, even five times the portion like Benjamin got. That is amazing grace, getting so much more that we don't deserve. God is just, God is merciful, God is gracious. We serve a good